Welcome to the Shift Gold Friday Gold Wrap, your overview of this week's precious metals news. It's Friday, January 25th. I'm your host, Mike Meharry. Thanks for tuning in. Well, we're entering, I believe, the 35th day of the government shutdown with no real end in sight. The Senate voted on two measures yesterday that could have ended the government work stoppage. One had wall funding, one didn't, as I understand it. Neither passed. The good news is the roads are still there. The bad news is the IRS is still collecting taxes. In an interview with Daniela Cambone, Peter Schiff called it a phony government shutdown. As long as they are still taking our money, I'd say that's pretty accurate. In a recent column, Paul Krugman tried to make this shutdown into some kind of dreamy experiment for libertarians, which is patently absurd. I know, Krugman saying something absurd is quite shocking, but yeah, when you know the government is going to be up and running again anytime, it's really hard to call it some kind of libertarian moment. Just because the government isn't doing certain things doesn't mean the private sector is suddenly going to take up the mantle. I mean, why would it? Who would invest money and create the infrastructure knowing the government is going to come right back and take over again in the near future? It's not like the government's gone forever. Some guy isn't going to start a private FDA knowing the real thing is still lurking right around the corner. On top of that, the government won't let us take over its functions. It's illegal. You may have heard there was a little movement by some Libertarian Party folks to clean up national parks. I know at one park, the park police told them to stop. Uh, They were accused of trespassing. Yeah, so much for the myth that we own the parks, right? We. Anyway, the point is, this government shutdown isn't some kind of experiment in libertarianism. And if anybody tells you it is, or Paul Krugman, well, they're whacked in the head. Now, like Peter said, if we could actually shut it down... That would be a positive. Ultimately, it ends up costing taxpayers more money to shut the government down than to leave it open. So it's actually worse because, like I said, it's a phony shutdown. There are some people who are starting to warn that the shutdown could derail the economy if it keeps going a whole lot longer. In fact, a former White House aide said it could tip us into a recession. Skybridge founder and co-managing partner Anthony Scaramucci made the comments during an interview at the Reuters Global Markets Forum. Now, he was Trump's communications chief for all of 10 days back in 2017. He said the shutdown could also weigh on the president's prospects for re-election. So, here we see the beginning of the excuse-making. It wasn't that the economy, economy was fundamentally weak. It was Trump's fault because he shut down the government. Look, if the economy is so weak that a relatively short partial shutdown can tip it into a recession, you had way bigger problems, like a central bank that blew up a bunch of asset bubbles with a decade of easy money. Now, one thing the shutdown has done is keep things pretty quiet in the markets because, well, there's no news. The government agencies that normally put out all of the facts and figures and statistics that move the market back and forth on a day-to-day basis, well, they're closed. So stocks were mixed this week, and gold fell a bit. The yellow metal hit a three-week low on Thursday, but was steady above 1280 earlier this morning, supported by worries over a slowing global economy and all of the shutdown rigmarole. But dollar strength is what's really capping gold right now. An economic analyst at Mitsubishi said that gold is not doing better in this environment of uncertainty and slower growth is testament to the U.S. dollar being the go-to safe haven at present. In fact, the greenback hit a three-week high this week. Now, there wasn't any significant Fed news out, but the European Central Bank held its policy meetings this week. Mario Draghi and company kept interest rates at record lows. Did you realize some rates are still below zero in the eurozone? The ECB pledged to keep rates at these levels at least until this summer. The big concern across the pond is slowing economic growth. In fact, earlier this week, the IMF cut its global growth forecast, blaming softening demand across Europe. Germany and Italy saw the biggest downward revisions after stricter emissions tests slashed car production in the region's largest economy, and the ongoing budget spat between Rome and the EU government in Brussels boosted sovereign borrowing costs. 
Here we have another fine example of government and bureaucracy dragging down an economy. Now, here's what's interesting to me about what's going on in Europe. They have barely tried to tighten their monetary policy. They're way behind the Fed in the tightening game. They just recently ended their QE. Interest rates are in the zero to negative range, and their economy is still tanking. So what's the ECB going to do when it spirals into a recession? So here's your central banker bovine scat for the week. Draghi said, ah, don't worry. Quote, I don't want to speculate about what contingency would call for a specific instrument. But if you look at the number of instruments we have in place now, we can conclude that it is not true that the ECB has run out of fuel or has run out of instruments. We have all of our toolbox still available. No, Mario, you don't. Gold retail demand fell to its lowest level in nearly two decades in 2018. Last year, investors bought about 13.8 million ounces of gold on a net basis. That was the lowest level since 2000. It's interesting to me that even with investment demand so low, the price of gold only fell 1% last year. Now, it was down a lot farther than that, but it rebounded late in the year as soon as stocks started to tumble. We seem to have a reprieve in the stock market right now thanks to the Powell put, but once the recession takes hold, and it is coming, ladies and gentlemen, I think the price of gold is going to shoot up. Gold is still on sale at this price, but as they say, this is a limited time offer. But some investors are starting to get it. Billionaire Sam Zell told Bloomberg TV, For the first time in my life, I bought gold because it is a good hedge. He also said shrinking production makes gold an attractive investment right now. Quote, go back to supply and demand. Supply is shrinking, and that is going to have a positive impact on pricing. Now, when he says the supply is shrinking, he's actually talking about mine output. Interestingly, we just reported that gold output in South Africa fell for the 14th straight month in November. Output was off 14% year on year. This is a continuation of a long-term trend we're seeing in a country that was once the world's number one gold producer. I'll link to an article about that on the show notes page. Definitely check it out because it gives some overview of long-term supply prospects. Anyway, Zell seems to get it. Cambone actually mentioned this to Peter during their interview, but Peter said he thinks she overestimates the sudden mainstream love affair with gold. Peter's comments are worth repeating. He said, very few people are talking about gold, and when it is mentioned, normally people just dismiss it or discredit it. The fact that a couple of people are talking about buying it, maybe that's just a novelty. So I think that it makes sense that some people are now finally looking at it. A lot more people should be looking at it. I think ultimately, that is going to happen as the price of gold moves higher. More importantly, though, as the problems begin to manifest themselves in ways that hurt investors in a more meaningful way, and as inflation starts to really take a toll on the real value of people's savings and their investments, as inflation starts to erode away their purchasing power, more and more people are going to wake up to the benefits of owning gold. Now, you know who is buying gold? The Chinese. China officially added gold to its reserves last month for the first time in over two years. Meanwhile, the Chinese have been shrinking their holding of U.S. treasuries. According to the Nikkei Asian Review, the moves are intended to reduce dependence on the U.S. dollar. That's interesting because a lot of people seem to view the dollar as the ultimate safe haven, just like I said a few minutes ago. But the Chinese, they won out, and so did the Russians and several other countries. Russian gold reserves increased 224 tons in 2017, marking the third consecutive year of plus 200-ton growth. The Russian central bank was on pace to continue that trend through 2018. And last spring, the Russians sold off nearly all of their U.S. Treasury holdings. They see trouble with the greenback, both the Russians and the Chinese. Of course, a lot of this is to protect themselves from U.S. policies that effectively weaponize the dollar. If these countries have gold, they have options to work around economic sanctions and general American bullying. I've talked about efforts to create alternative payment systems. Even the EU has plans to develop a special payment channel to circumvent U.S. economic sanctions and facilitate trade with Iran. Gold is a big part of this plan. It's really all about diversification. These countries don't want all of their eggs in the dollar basket. 
I think that's smart thinking on an individual basis as well. The dollar is strong right now, but it's not going to last. We're already seeing Fed dovishness. What do you think is going to happen when the recession hits? We're way overdue, folks. Then we'll see zero interest rates again. We'll get more QE, and the dollar is going to tank. It's interesting because the e, uh, the euro is tanking right now with uh, what's going on with the ECB. So to learn more about how gold can help diversify your portfolio and protect your wealth, talk to a Shift Gold Precious Metal Specialist today. Call 1-888-GOLD-160. Well, that's a gold wrap for this week. You can get more details on all of these stories and more and keep up with the latest precious metals news and analysis throughout the week at shiftgold.com slash news. And if you haven't done it already, you can subscribe to the Friday Gold Wrap over at iTunes or on the Shift Gold YouTube channel. You'll find links on our show notes page. And if you're listening on YouTube, YouTube, please feel free to share your thoughts on this week's gold news in the comment section. We always love to get your perspective. Thanks again for listening, and I will talk to you again next week.